Hey guys, this is Scott from Church Tech Talks. Hey, today we're going to talk about how to get your church's service live streamed to Facebook and YouTube at the same time using some software that's pretty cheap and very easy to use. So whether you are a full-time tech that has been working really long hours, a volunteer that is being asked to do something that you've never done before, or even a pastor that has no idea how to do something like this, I'm going to take it step by step, make it really simple, as simple as I can, so let's dive right in. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna be using this software called Ecamm Live. I really like Ecamm Live. It's free if you're okay with a watermark, which is a little mark in the bottom corner of your broadcast. If you don't have a budget and you're fine with a watermark that just says Ecamm Live on it, that's fine, that totally will work. If you don't want that watermark, it's pretty cheap to pay for this service. And then the second service we're gonna be using is a service called Restream.io. Restream's cool because what you can do is from that Ecamm software, you can broadcast to Restream and Restream will sort of work as your distributor. They will broadcast to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. Once you create your account, you just click your add channel button. You can add Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, whatever you want here. They'll take you step by step in logging into each of those services and getting them set up. It's really simple. Once you're in there, you can click on title and you can title your upcoming service. So maybe you say church service Sunday and you update all. It's gonna update the title for the next broadcast that you have coming up. They also have a really cool built-in chat. So if you click this little chat icon right here, you can open it right in your browser. And this allows you to actually send one message and it will post it from your church's account on Facebook. And it'll also send that same message to your church's account on YouTube. So in those live comment sections, um, it'll look like you're posting directly on both of them. Um, it's sort of a chat aggregator. So you'll see comments on both feeds. You can respond to both individually. It's a pretty cool feature and it works pretty well. Um, we did have a slight hiccup with it when we started using it, but it was in beta. Um, so uh, it seems to be getting better and it seems to be a little bit more stable now. It's great to have someone that can respond to comments in your live stream. It helps make it more interactive and you can do things that you otherwise couldn't do on just a normal live stream. For instance, we're using it to send connect cards. So they click on a link and they can go to a form to tell us their name, tell us uh, maybe some contact information, maybe a prayer request form. Maybe the pastor wants to link to uh, another YouTube YouTube video or he wants to link to some other resources that they can use throughout the week. You can use that chat to kind of really make this uh, more interactive um, and more engaging. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Ecamm Live here. I'm not gonna cover all the features. I'm just gonna basically cover what'll get you up and running quickly. So here is how it sort of looks like when you first open it up. Um, I'm gonna close a few tabs because we don't need them. You have camera effects. If you're just using the camera that's built in, um, you can use these camera effects to do some really cool things. Like you can maybe you wanna zoom in uh, the camera a little bit. Uh, you can kind of do that. Um, I believe you can move it around at that point as well, which is pretty cool. Um, you could also go to, you know, picture settings and you have control of, you know, brightness, temperature, saturation, your gamma, all these things that if you're not using professional video equipment can help make your picture just look a little bit better. So if you do have another camera that you're plugging in, maybe you're using a webcam or maybe you're using a Blackmagic ATEM or another switcher of sorts, you will see that camera show up right in here. And it's important to remember that you need the camera to show up as a, a webcam. Um, that's the best way to get it in here. So using something like the Blackmagic Web Presenter to take a, a SDI feed or using something like that to take a video feed, you know, HDMI or SDI into your computer, make it be seen as a webcam. Then you can select it here. You'll also have it um, under this drop down camera. You'll have it uh, in addition to your FaceTime HD camera. It'll say what's there. Uh, one final thing I'll say before we go into building the actual live stream is that you have this sound level section here. And if you're coming in from something like an ATEM, you really should come off your audio console and send some audio, some broadcast audio directly to that ATEM. Uh, and then what you can do is select right here. It'll show up um, as an option to select that Blackmagic web presenter or however you're bringing in that audio um, as, as your audio source instead of using the built-in microphone on your Mac. And then one other thing, 
Um, in settings, if you go to audio, you're definitely going to want to turn off echo cancellation. That's going to mess up your broadcast audio unless you're using the audio from your Mac and then you can leave it on. You're also going to want to map input channels to one and two. And over in the stream tab, uh, this is where you can set your stream settings. So 1080p, 69 and 60 frames per second is probably the best uh, that you're gonna wanna do. If you're having issues with buffering, lagging, anything like that, you can always back it down to 720p. Um, and that's gonna help if you have maybe a, a worse internet connection. All right, so let's close these two things um, and let's talk about scenes. So scenes are kind of like camera looks that you can do. So the way we use them is we have a scene that's sort of like the service opener. We'll go live on that. It'll be a countdown. Uh, we have another scene that is our ATEM feed. And then we have a third scene that's kind of like the last scene we take from our broadcast. So let's build one of those and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna add a scene. We're gonna call this our service countdown. And instead of using this camera, what I wanna do is I wanna use actually this video file right here. So I'm just gonna drag this and drop this in. There's our video file. You'll see that the camera now becomes kind of a picture in picture in the bottom corner. So we just wanna X that out because that will be on your broadcast. So X that out, get rid of it. Uh, you don't want it there. So now we're gonna go over to overlays and we're gonna create some overlays. So the first one I'm gonna do is a text overlay. And I'm just gonna say service will begin in. I'm gonna center that. Um, that font size is probably good. It might have default a background on there that looks like that. I don't like how that looks, so I take it off. Let's go ahead and add that. Here's our service will begin in. Um, we can center that on the page. Um, and now we can add down here in overlays, we can add a new countdown overlay. So you can count down for an amount of time, you can count down to a date time, a clock or a stopwatch. So I'm gonna count down to a date time. Let's just say we're gonna count down to 1 a.m. And yes, it is pretty late here. And then I'm gonna check this little thing that says go to next scene when finished. So we're gonna add that. That timer is a little small, so I'm gonna go in here and increase the font size to something I'd rather see, 72. Replace that, there we go. All right, so now we've got our timer set up. Um, the video stopped because it's not looping by default, so we just click this little button right here, loop video, uh, we can click play, and now that video is just gonna continually loop right there. Now we checked that box that said go to next scene when the timer's up, so let's go ahead and build our next scene. I'm gonna drag that one in the trash, we're gonna create a new one, and I'm gonna say this is our ATEM feed. Let's say this is, well, it's just a camera feed of whatever camera you're using. Um, so there's our camera feed. Um, and I, I don't need to do anything to this. Um, it's it's good to go. It's just our, our normal camera feed. The third th one I'm gonna add in is kind of a service ending. Um, and I'm gonna use that same video. So I'll just drag and drop that in. Again, get rid of that camera, put in a text layer. And we're just gonna say, thank you for joining us. Press enter and there is our final screen. Maybe we could put some uh, some extra text in there, maybe another text layer that says, um, if you need prayer, please call the church office. Something like that. We're gonna make that text smaller. Well, not that small. There we go. Centered. And we'll drag that there. That's a little too small still. So let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. So that's pretty good to me. Again, we're gonna loop the video. There we go, cool. All right, so now you can use, uh, you can see the little shortcuts here, command one, command two, command three, to go to your scene. So if I hit command one, it's gonna take us to scene one. I'm gonna hit command two, it's gonna take us to our camera. Command three, it's gonna take us to our service ending. So now you'll notice that all of these have different overlays in their own scenes right here. But what we can also do is we can do a global scene. Maybe you want to add your, your church's logo in the corner. Um, I don't have a logo, so I'm just going to use that screenshot there. Um, so we'll drag that in as a new overlay. Um, just drag and drop. It's super easy. And I want to show this in all scenes, so I'm just going to drag it up here into all scenes. And then I position that in the bottom corner, like it would be, you know, a logo stamp there. So that's there. Now, no matter what scene I go to, that's going to be in that scene. So you can kind of do it like that. 
Now that that's set up, um, we just need to select our destination. So our destination is, uh, right now it's restream.io. Um, you can do Facebook, stream directly to Facebook and not even use restream. Uh, you can go to Periscope, Twitch, YouTube. Um, they have restream and switchboard live. They also have a custom stream key and you can do record only. Now that's really cool if you wanna record something to your desktop and then maybe you're going to broadcast it later. You can have that option to do that. Say if your church staff wanted to record something on a Monday morning, but broadcast it on a Wednesday night. Now, if you do pre-record something, what you can do is you can set up another scene and we'll just call this like pre-recorded right there. Drag that to the bottom here. And I'll use this video since I have it. There we go. If this were a pre-recorded thing, I, I wouldn't want this to loop. I wouldn't want it to do nothing when the video ends. I might want it to end the broadcast, so we can just do that. And then as soon as we're ready to go, we can hit play and go live. So that's pretty much it. That's how to use this Ecamm software, how to use Restream and get your broadcast kind of out, looking pretty professional pretty quickly. Um, I hope that was useful for you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to this video and uh, I'll have more coming out about broadcasts in the next few weeks. All right, guys, take care.